All right, guys, so it's my first time in the Jackson Bight, and I am on the river. So this is really what I bought this boat for. It's a, a lightweight, you know, for its width. It's a super stable boat, as you can see here. You know, it's gonna look more rocky, and then you hit a bump, you go right over it. And one of the things that I like to do when getting new people on the river, uh, first thing, and I talked about this in the last episode, is teach them how to rock broach. Here's the thing about river fishing. Um, there's a thing called a rock broach. One of the first things you need to learn, so my hand's a rock, this hand's the boat. If you're going down river and you bump into something, lean into it. What I like to tell people is stab it with your paddle or put your foot on it. Uh, if it's ahead of you and you could throw your heel out and put the weight on that side, but basically reach for it. Reach for it with your paddle, reach for it with your foot. What that does is that puts the weight on that side of the boat and then the current will take you around it and then you just continue on downstream. Here's how you end up in those situations. You're going downstream, here's your boat, you hit a rock and you lean away from it. Now what happens is you've leaned away from it, the water pressure builds up on this side of the boat, you go up further on the rock. Then the water pressure builds up even more and now you're leaning away and you just scoot up on top of the rock. Before you ever river fish, one of the things that I tell people all the time and one of the drills that we like to do is float down the river with your eyes closed, find a slow moving section of the river and when you bump into something, just reach for it. When you bump into something, put your weight on that side. If you put your weight on that side, you keep yourself from putting the weight away from it which lets you slide up it. The water pressure is going to push you up it because the water pressure builds up on the up current side you're leaning away from it and it just goes whoop whoop and you're out of the boat. So rock broach is probably the number one thing you should know before you get in a fishing kayak. We're gonna bring you a little river safety. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish and I'm gonna bring you my kind of thoughts on the Jackson bite. Big reason I bought this boat, again, it's wide. So it gives you a little bit of forgiveness for making those mistakes and it lets you get away with a little bit more. So if I happen to have a friend on the river and I see them, hey, and I say, no, 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 lean, lean towards the rock, lean towards the rock, and then they can still spin around, make it down the river safely, and we have a great day on the water. So without further ado, down the river we go, dry fly, and we got some big meaty flies to throw for some trophy browns if the opportunity presents itself. I can tell you right out of the gate, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Nalgene bottle style drink holders because it actually fits a fly reel perfect. And the paddle bungee on the side allows me to strap my fly rod in. So it's right there. It's easy to grab. It's easy to pick up. It's easy to put away. And uh, other than actually hitting fish on the run, uh, I feel comfortable enough in this boat that I may even be able to just cast from the seating position, stand up, uh, and actually hit some of these fish on the drift. So got a bank angler coming up so I'm gonna ease over to the other side of the river. All right so we made it to the first spot where we're pulling over and Juan headed over here to fish this creek that's coming in from the other side and there's a nice green line down here. You raise it up so you guys can see it and basically those trout are gonna stack up on the back edge of that line. <clears throat> so Juan is throwing a nymphing rig uh, like we've been doing the last few days and I decided that I wanted to swing for the fences try for a bigger brown so let me show you what I'm throwing so I'm throwing this fly that they call a circus peanut and what it is it's an olive body with a little flash it's got a bullet style head on it and it's actually got two hooks in it so I'm gonna throw that dude right there and see if I can't get a big trophy brown to eat it here we go Juan's got his first fish on, so let's ease out here and see what he's got going on. What you got, Juan? Got a hand line of men. We're going old school. Got a cane pole. Got a, oh, you got the Tenkara. Oh, a little something different. Cane pole it. He took the caddis, the rainbow trout. Nice. Pretty little rainbow. Let's get a closer look at this dude. He took the caddis fly on the bottom. Look at that guy right there. Flying there. Yeah, man. Let me get a broad side. Look at that guy in the beautiful fish. Yeah, look at that thing. Okay. And guys, don't forget, especially when you got little meaty sausage hands like this, wet your hands before you handle these fish. It's the way to do it. All right, and then quickly get those dudes back in the water, and I'm gonna get Juan to walk us through how he's fishing it. There you go, he's in. <laughs> All right, pro release. So Juan, show us what you're doing different than what we've been doing the last few days. Well, actually. I'm not doing a whole lot different. I'm just I'm sorry, the different rod technique, I guess I should say. So ba basically what I'm doing, what I'm doing, Chad, is fishing with a Tankara rod. It's a Japanese style of fishing. It's extremely efficient. There's no reel. It's a level line. 
um, right to the tip of the rod, which is tied in with a special knot that you use on the lily. And I'm not gonna get on the detail of all the little things, but really what this is, is almost a tight line nymphing kind of outfit the way I fish it. Typically it's fished with a, a special kind of what's called a tenkara fly, but I Americanized it a lot <laughs> by just saying, hey, this looks like a great tool to Euro, Euro nymph with. And so I've got a, a dual nymph rig here going on. We got a little bit of a knot, so I got to fix that. My point fly is a caddis fly, and that's my heaviest fly fished on the, the far end of the line. And it's imitating a caddis larva. And so that's what that is. And it's extremely heavy, tied with a tungsten, tungsten bead. And then my upper fly is an old fashioned hare's ear um, nymph with a bead. And uh, it's really just to imitate those sulfur nymphs that we've been fishing the past few days. That fish actually took the cats. So maybe the fish is telling us something. Maybe they changed the menu. We'll have to wait and see what we do. All right, let's get another one. Sounds good to me, man. All right, first dry fly fish. And it was an awesome freaking eat. The fish came up and, ha <laughs> ha, come on, buddy. Thank you, man. Look at that guy right there. Came up and smoked that dry fly. Oh, calm down, buddy, calm down. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. There he goes. Juan, of course, is back out there. Fish again. Got a beautiful, beautiful rainbow. Look at that thing. Yeah, this is a damn yeah, uh, Look at that thing, pretty. And on that 10 car, man, it really had you bowed up. Yeah, it was, now I'm, I'm fishing, it's weird because, you know, this fish came on, uh, uh, two, I'm fishing really two caddis imitations. See kind of the green color in there? That's coloration of a caddis larva. And I'm fishing two different caddis flies now uh, to make this happen. And they're really chomping on them. I mean, I'm getting them. That's, I mean, we just walked in here just to try it before we got to the good, the good spot. spot. Before we got to the good spot. And I, I mean, four fish in pretty quick order out of here. This is a nice fish though. Man, look at that, that fish. Guy, All right, guys, we got this fish nice and healthy back in the net. And now it is time for slow-mo release. So one adjustment I can tell you I have to make right off the bat because my seat's a little bit lower than it normally is is I had to shorten my paddle. Uh, I, I like a bit more of a vertical stroke and because this boat maneuvers so easy, I don't need to get the, the paddle way out away from the boat to make the adjustments I need to make. So I basically shortened my paddle down to the shortest setting. Uh, that way I've got more of a vertical stroke when I need it for efficiency, uh, but I still have plenty of leverage if I need to spin the boat as you can see here. Uh, super easy to spin and then again I want to be more vertical when I want to power through stuff so a lot of times I see guys just paddling way too long a paddle paddle as short a paddle as you can get away with doing a vertical stroke down the side of your boat and the big reason that I love the Benny Branches plus series paddles is I can adjust it for the boat that I'm in and I don't have to go back and buy another paddle or paddle inefficiently when you go right down to the middle like this. I'm a huge component of going to the slack side. I just wanted to play this boat out. I'm trying to see how much flex we have in the hull and how it handles this water, how fast it vacates the water. And uh, so again, this is how I'm testing this boat out. But in theory, you want to be on one of these sides out of the washing machine, which is this ripple in the middle because there's a lot of rocks in here that you catch your boat, spin it around. And if you have any drops at all, that's how you can get flipped.
That's a nice brown, man. Quick release. All right, guys, so here's the deal. We caught fish. Thank you to that knucklehead over there for taking me to his spots and showing me the ropes here in Happy Valley, PA. Unfortunately, we have one more cast at ourselves to where we got now like two hours worth of paddling to make up in one hour, and we gotta go. So see y'all in the next one. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor and help support the channel by downloading the Fishing Chaos app now so you can get in on the action. Do you ever clean this windshield, bro? Hell no, man. <laughs> if I run out of flies, I just scrape a bug off the windshield. Look at this. Tie. Look at this purple. Yeah, it's not going to come through as good on video, but man, look at that purple haze over there. It's like coming out yeah, off the top of that wash. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I just greased them around a little bit. Just smeared them. But look at that purple. That is so cool.